Doug Stanhope, ladies and gentlemen. Doug Stanhope, here he is. Thank you. How is everyone? Everyone drunk yet? <laughs> Need a smoke? They made my video the longest because I'm the filthiest and they want to get me off stage the quickest. Maplewood needs a dirty comic like, like you need a thalidomide baby in a circle jerk. So I'm just going to make this short and sweet. <laughs> we had a great time. We appreciate you coming out and supporting this. We're all heading for uh, Colorado uh, next week. We're uh, all loading up in my car and driving out. It should be a fun time. Uh, Chard and I are doing the uh, Vail National Comedy Competition uh, or Comedy Festival. I did the uh, comedy competition in March for big cash prizes. And I lost like a pig. Thank you very much. Thank you. They fucking hated me, ladies and gentlemen. But this time, we're just doing it for fun. No cash prizes involved. So I just get to go out and have the same people that hated me last time hate me this time. But I still get all the pleasure of, you know, $9 for a cheeseburger and eating it with a big pompous asshole skier, you know, paying $250 for a fucking hotel room. Can't, you know... Tom Baudet better wipe my ass for me, much less leave the light on and have money. I was out there in March. I spent $1.80 a gallon for gasoline. Like, they couldn't put 10 cents of sand down on the road, you know. Skidding all over the place, bald tires, no insurance, no driver's license. Every little Nazi GQ ski puke flashing his lights at, like I want to drive 20 miles an hour. Fuck you. If I go off the road, I can't whip out daddy's visa card and dial up AAA. I'm I'm a comedian. I go off the road, I'm wearing a wig and a truck stop, hustling blowjobs for a bus fare. <laughs> There's some old people here tonight that might not have drank for 60 years it will be drinking tonight. <laughs> I was in Vail, Colorado. This is true. They, they were skiing. I don't ski, but there was this woman skiing with a baby in a pouch on her chest, skiing down those mountains are huge, it's insane, that's sick, man. I'm pro-choice, you don't want to have a kid, don't have them, but don't squeeze them out and use them for a fucking airbag, you know? <laughs> it's child abuse, I swear, people squeeze out kids just to have weird shit to do with them. I went to a rodeo thing, it's a, like a little small town freak show rodeo for the kids, and they were doing this thing called mutton busting. It was an actual thing where they were taking like little eight and nine year old kids and they'd stick them on the back of a sheep and then they kick the fucking thing. It goes berserk. There's a crap out of it. Oh, they're quite a sheep. Don't wanna, the kids don't want to be in a sheep. The sheep are rabid. They're every, probably because a probably because the kid's peeing down his back at this point. But the sick thing was is their parents are watching this shit laughing their asses off. I think it's hysterical. The kids are fighting for their lives. Their parents are drunk. Go oh, ride that sheep like daddy taught you. <laughs> Quit your crying. Be a man. It's your daughter. Shut up. My parents were strict, but they never pit me against livestock for kicks, you know? People do some. So anyway, so we're driving out there. We leave Monday, man. You guys want to come? There's room in the trunk. <laughs> I, uh, so it's a great drive, too, man. I drove back from there. God forbid they should put a radio station anywhere between here and Denver, for God's sake. Driving across the Dakotas, you hit your scan button. It's like playing roulette without the ball. It just spins, it spins. It, you get a choice of static or national public radio. Let me flip a coin on that one. You're now listening to national public radio. We now go live to Liechtenstein for a concert from a cafe where Jans Chaskahanovanovanovitz is playing a dulcimer strung only with scrotum hair. This is national public radio. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. It's awful. I blew a speaker in my car today. That sucked. Man, he was a motivational speaker. Uh, <laughs> left a bad taste in my mouth, but I feel a lot more positive tonight. I'll tell you that right now. Relax. I just found out I'm gay last week in North Dakota. That sucked. <laughs> I had no idea. Some guy in a bar told me. <laughs> You're a faggot. Ah, oh, shit. How am I going to tell my dad? So I'm not breaking it to him. I was an asshole. He's going to hate this. 
I didn't get shit from a guy in North Dakota for wearing an earring. You queer somebody got an earring. Well, you some kind of queer wear a whip's jewelry. Everyone in the world has an earring now. It's nothing. I know a guy who's got his lip pierced. He's got his schmeckle pierced, and he runs a chain in between them. I can jerk off just talking too much, but I'm some kind of freak for wearing an earring. It's ridiculous. We just did a show. We were just in North Dakota, man. And any state I can make a living hustling Scrabble. <laughs> you do the scoring. Me and Billy ain't very arithmetic. We weren't even doing material in North Dakota. We're doing knock-knock jokes and shit for these people. Limericks. They thought we were geniuses. <laughs> I did that one about the man from Nantucket one more time, only slower, because my wife didn't get it. <laughs> it's awful. We were, we were there, and this is a true story, we were there last summer. They had the big state fair going on. They put an ad in the newspaper. They set up a trailer at the state fair to check for prostate cancer. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I want carnival workers checking my prostate. <laughs> walk in there think it's just another midway attraction, you know? Make sure you know they got you pinned down with your pants at your ankles. You look behind you, it's the same guy that was running the Tilt-A-Whirl an hour ago. He's got a prison tattoo that says, Phil to here. Five tickets, please. Only two to watch. Come on in. Good time for everyone. They brought me to a topless bar in Bismarck. I give you a word of advice. If you're gonna go to a topless bar, take a look around the town first. <laughs> There's no one in the entire town you'd want to see naked. Chances are they're not gonna be in the titty bar either. Because you, you know, by applause, who's been to a topless bar at any point in your life for any reason? Oh, three people, yeah. Well, we're in Maple. It's a very good chance. You know, it's pretty stupid. You go and you stick dollars in a girl's G-strings. You pay too much for your drinks. It's pretty harmless. This place in, in North Dakota, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. For a buck and a quarter, you get a paper cup full of pellets. Yeah, and the girls would lean right over the railing and eat right out of your hand. You could pet them and everything. It was the weirdest thing. It was all true. I walk into this place. The girl has a dancer's name is Chuck if that's any indication. She walks out on the stage and this woman had, she had this belly that kind of stuck out so the tits sat up on top of it and the G-strings wedged in the middle there. And she's out there sweating to the oldies or had a roll of fat on the back of her head, one tooth in her mouth. Wasn't even her tooth. There's like a Lee Press-On tooth right in the middle of her face there. Just out there clammy and dripping sweat on you. I mean, you could take dollar bills and just slap them to her belly like a refrigerator magnet. <laughs> Stick right on there, man. It wasn't even pornography, it was zoology. <laughs> Tipping the girl in camel cash. <laughs> so anyway. So I got her back up to my hotel room and uh, <laughs> Now, now, later on, when she was beautiful, tequila. They have a topless bar in town that does comedy. Is, does anyone know about that? Mitch and I worked at it. It's at Sheik's in Minneapolis. We worked there. They have a comedy club in there. We're doing shows for six people every night. It's brutal. Because they, they comedy's in a separate room there. So when people come in, they say, you know, do you want to see really beautiful centerfolds show their tits or, you know, the weird guy in a Santa hat? You know, Ooh, flip a coin. <laughs> so we're doing shows for no one. And I worked the whole week there. And, I, and the last night I'm in there, a buddy comes, comes in and turns me on to this drug ecstasy. I know a lot of you older folks are hip on this, but for my friends who've never heard of drugs, I, uh, well, I didn't know what it was either. I said, well, what is it? He said, well, Doug, it's illegal. So I did it. And... Uh, <laughs> He goes, yeah, it makes you really horny. <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm working here, looking at the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. They won't even talk to me. I haven't got laid in three months. My morning boner's running a 24-hour cycle for the last week. I don't need to artificially induce being horny. It's the longest night of my life. I, I did shit to myself that night I've never done to a woman. <laughs> The maid comes in in the morning, everything's covered in cooking oil, there's, there's a porno going, there's a melon with a hole drilled in it. What's that for? 
I had a little luau. <laughs> you need more smut in this town. Not Maplewood. This is a big smut capital. Drive by his muggies. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I went into an adult bookstore in, Fe in, uh, in Minneapolis, right downtown. It's called Sex World. Now I know why they call it Sex World. Because <laughs> they can't name it things that fit in your ass. <laughs> I knew that joke wouldn't work, but... <laughs> the other guys, they put thought into my material. My, my act is basically talking about my dick, you know? <laughs> so I'll never refer to myself as an artist. <laughs> People come to see me to see art like I go to a titty bar to appreciate dance. <laughs> There's no art involved. And besides, Minnesota, I've been in 49 out of 50 states, and I swear, Minnesota people are, without question, honestly, the nicest people anywhere in the country. Don't, don't clap, because honestly, it drives you out of your fucking mind after a while if you're not from here. I just want somebody to flip me off. Be mean to me, you know? Lock your brakes up in front of me. Just be, let it out of your system, for God's sake. It's, it's gonna, you're going to explode. I walk into a restaurant out here. Uh, you know, I say, where's the restroom? Ah, oh, sit down. I'll draw you a little map. There's a couple of ways you can go out here. You go over by non-smoking, cut down by the counter. That's all. I'm going to piss my pants here. Oh, don't worry. My brother's a dry cleaner. We'll help you out there. Yeah. Yeah, and your mother's a whore. Oh, I thought she's a librarian. I should call more often. <laughs> Have a nice day. Nicest people anywhere. And the whitest people you'll ever see in your life, too. I was at Phelan Lake today, handing out flyers for this show. I swear to you, some of those people will burn their retinas right out of your fucking eyes, man. One Minnesota winter will suck every ounce of pigment right out of your body. It's incredible. You people could suntan just looking at a Japanese flag. <laughs> sunblock just to do it with the lights on. I was here in March and I had just come from Hawaii, so everywhere I went, I, was, I, I had a great tan and, and walking around in, in Minneapolis, I was some kind of deity, you know. I have packs of pale, clammy children just follow me around, try to touch me. <laughs> Tell us about the sun. <laughs> Awful. I'm sweating, man. <laughs> Right at the Mall of America, man, shopping. You guys want to have fun shopping? Want to see a sales girl sweat? Go in a dressing room after about five minutes, yell out, Hey! There's no toilet paper in this stall! <laughs> there you go, man. We're all going to go out and drink like pigs tonight. You guys are more than welcome to join us. We'll be out in the lobby. <laughs> Try to get the weird guy in a Santa hat late night is the topic here. <laughs> Did you ever go through the personal ads? What's that, the city pages you got here? Did you ever read the personal ads looking for a date? People in personal ads are pretty fucking picky for people advertising in a newspaper for a date, aren't they? Did you read these things? I want a non-drinker, non-smoker, over six feet tall, six-figure income, Christian, no children, 30 to 35, no drugs. You, you read their description. Uh, I'm a three-foot-nine bar hag from Rochester with two teeth and an extra head grown out of my sternum. Nice eyes. Just lift the patch. Ooh. No way. I go through the personal ads on the bathroom walls from here on in, you know. They're simple and to the point, you know. Sally sucks dick. Fine. Dinner's on me. Thank you. You guys have been a lot of fun. We appreciate you supporting us. Let's bring uh, Mitchell and Hedberg back out and Jana Johnson.